Right, so for the first expression, to factorize the difference of two squares, I notice this is going to be difference of two squares because I've got two square numbers taken away. X squared is obviously a square because if I square X, I get X squared. And nine is just three squared. So I know they're square numbers. Straight away, I will get two brackets. And in the brackets, I'm going to have the square root of each of the numbers. So the square root of X squared is X. So I have an X and an X. The square root of nine is three. And I have a minus and a plus, and that is my factorized expression. Is everyone happy with that? Yep. Okay, fab. B, 16x squared take away 25. So what is the square root of 16x squared? Four x, so I put four x in, and the square root of twenty five is five, and again you have the minus and the plus. Okay, so that one's quite straightforward. Now the last one looks a little bit more diff, a little more difficult, because fifty is not a square number nor is 18. So here, can you think of a number that goes into 50 and 18 that we could take out as a factor? Uh, two? two. Two, brilliant. So I can do two brackets. I'm taking the two out of the whole expression. So we have 25x squared take away 9y squared. So this some very often happens. So now... I can see the expression in the brackets that I can factorize. That is just going to become 5x minus 3y, 5x plus 3y. And I still have the 2 on the outside. So I just put the 2 next to the two brackets. So is everyone happy with those questions? Yep. Okay, fantastic. We'll do one. We'll do, we'll do a more tricky one, so a more typical sort of exam question. Um, in fact, what I'll do. I mean, I'll make one up, but I'll just get the past, I'll get all the past papers up because I know there was one from earlier today that I did. It was quite good, but I'll just make one up first. Right. So, um, typical question on this. So we'll do this type of question and then maybe a factorizing quadratic as well. So you could typically get a question like this where it says simplify. So it could be uh, Okay, the question could be like that. So it's a fraction and it's saying to simplify. There's nothing we can do straight away. We're going to have to take out, we're going to have to factorize the top and the bottom. Okay. So, what do I get if I factorize? Well, I'm going to give you a chance to write it first, but think about what would I get if I factorized the top? Just think about that while I get the papers up. So on the top, we should have x minus 4, x plus 4. Are we all happy with that? Yeah, okay. 
Now, the bottom expression is just a normal linear expression. How could I factorize 2x minus 8? Take out factor 2. Brilliant. Take out factor of 2. We get x minus 4. What will cancel out? x minus 4. Brilliant. x minus 4 just cancels out. So we get x plus 4 over 2. Okay, so that's quite a typical sort of question. Right, um, let's have a look through because... Um, let's have a look. Let me find a question like that. Uh, that's one sec. There you go. This is a really good question. So I'm going to give you a past paper question to do as long as we're happy with that one. This was the last question in summer 2022. Okay. So have a go at simplifying the expression I've got on the screen. That one was, again, the last question of summer 2022, unit one. Okay, again, just um, let me know if you finish it. I'll give you an extension question to do. Right, I'll get another one in there if you will. Sorry. Brilliant. Uh, let's look at one like this. There you go. This is a good one. Okay. But actually, I'm going to make... There's a good one in there, paper. I'm going to make it harder. Right. Okay, so I'm just going to put this in. Okay, so put a thumbs up when you finish it. We'll go to the answer.
Right, I think my no, my mic is still working. Yeah, just testing that. Okay, has everyone had a go at the question? Okay, right, so we'll do the, we'll simplify the one. I'll just go through the one on the board, I'm sure it's fine. So, so on the bottom, I can see this is going to be difference of two squares. 2x minus 5, 2x plus 5. And on the top, I can take out a factor of 3, giving me 2x minus 5. And we can see what simplifies. The 2x minus 5s will cancel, leaving me with 3 over 2x plus 5. So do we get that answer there? Yeah. Okay, fantastic. Not an easy question. Um so Okay, so I did put an extension one in there if anyone did this one. So for this one, um if you factorize the bottom difference well you can't use difference two squares straight away on the bottom. The bottom, you need to factorize. I'll choose different color. Maybe I won't. No, nope. let me change color. Okay, I won't. So uh, if, I, if I take out a factor of three on the bottom, you get x squared minus four, which then simplifies to three times x minus two times x plus two, giving me this expression as the denominator. Now, the numerator you can factorize the quadratic. So that, you know, there's loads of methods for that. You know, you could do four multiplied by minus two, that's minus eight. And I want a pair of numbers that times to give minus eight and add to give minus seven because the minus seven is multiplied by the X. So that lets you split up the minus seven. Um, I could use, to get minus eight, I could use minus eight and plus one. So minus eight X plus one X um, minus two. Then you split down the middle. Four X X minus two plus, well, one times X minus two, giving you four X plus one and X minus two. And you can see this time the X minus two factor will cancel leaving you with 4x plus 1 on the top and 3 times x plus 2 on the bottom, which if you wanted to, you could expand the bottom to get 3x plus 6, and that would be your answer. So if you did the extension, that's what we should get. Okay. So can you put a thumbs up or a thumbs down to indicate how you feel about difference of two squares? They can't really make it much more tricky than that. I think most of us are okay with that. Um, I can give you some questions that you can do on your own later. But what we'll do now, we'll have a look at circle theorems. And then we'll open it up again. I mean, I did have, so I've got the stuff planned, but I'm happy to do any topics. So if we have a look at circle theorems, uh, I've got all of the non-calculator papers up here. They can ask it in calculator as well. It's not impossible to come up. Um, let's have a little look. So this paper, there's this question here. So I'll just indicate uh, the year of the paper. So this one is November 2018, Unit 1. 
question seven. Okay, so this one is OCW, so they obviously want to see some subheadings. And we want to work out the value of X. Okay, so have a look at the circle and just maybe write down what circle theorems you think would be useful. So, you know, you might think, right, okay, I can see there's an angle at the center of the circle and an angle at the edge. Angle at the center is twice angle at circumference. Um, don't know if there are any others that will be useful there. But yeah. So, yeah, what I could do first is work out the angle at the center, and Ethan's already said that. That's 148, well done. So I can say... The angle AOB equals double the 74. And I have to give a reason. I can put it in brackets, and that is angle at center is twice angle at circumference. Okay, so I can put that on, that's one four eight. How would I now get X? Focusing on Um would like uh A and B be the same because it's isosceles triangle? Yes, fantastic. Okay, we can see this triangle AOB is isosceles because OA and OB both form radi the radius of the circle. So I can say uh, something like triangle AOB is isosceles. And my reason, because OA equals OB equals the radius. So you don't have to put radius, but yeah. Um, and then I can just say, therefore, Angle OAB equals 180, take away 148, but I have to halve it. In fact, we're actually after X, so I'll just write X. Okay, so that is... That is um, 32 on the top, 180 take away 148. And then halved is 16 degrees. Okay, does that make sense? Brilliant. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to make a quick question for you. Let's do over here. So I'll just make one. I'm not going to be as worried about the OCW for this. Just bear with me a second. Give me one second before I will do some of the past paper ones, but I just want to make one first. So, say so that is. Say so that is. So that's X. And okay, so have a go at this question. So I'll write the question now. And also, I haven't actually said, but this is the center.
Okay, so have a go at working out um, X and Y, and you've got to give reasons for your answers, okay? So have a go at that. Let me know if you finished it, and I'll put an extension one in the chat, and then we'll do some of the past paper ones again. Sorry, let me get this off the screen. There we go. I'll put an extension one in if you will. That's great. Okay, so have we all had a go at the one on the board? Okay, hey, that's a few of us. I think that's most of us. Um, for X, we can see that will be 20 degrees because you've got this tangent and it meets the radius here, the radius OB, it's going to meet that at 90. So we know part of the 90 is 70. The remaining part is the X. That's got to be 20. So my reasoning there is tangent, my reason is tangent meets radius at 90 degrees. Um, and why? What do we get for why? Well, why is just 40 degrees because the angle at the center is 80. Again, that is because angle at center is twice angle at circumference. We're happy with that one. Yeah, it's not, you know, again, circle themes are not easy. Um, please let me know if you want to go over that one again or if there's any others you want to go through. Uh, we'll do the extension one. I put an extension one into the chat. That is this one. So this one, you want to find the angle OQR. So what I can say, you've got OQ, that's a radius, and then PQ is a tangent. So we can say, well, we know that's 90. The angle PQO or OQP, that's going to be 90. So is the angle ORP, right? These are 90 degrees. So... 
how would I work out the angle? Um, this is, they want OQR, so they want this little angle here. But firstly, can I work out the angle at the center? So this angle, you know, maybe it would help if I drew diagram. How would I work out that angle X? Just add the night two nineties and thirty and then do three sixty. Take away that. Brilliant. Add those up. So one eighty to ten. Take that away from three sixty. So three to one sixty, hundred and fifty. Excellent. Well done. So that's one. 50, that is the angle in the center. Okay, so we can do with that. So we know that's 150. They want the angle OQR, which is this. Um, we know the whole thing is 90. Well, I know it's isosceles. Yeah, I can see that this little triangle, so if I just shade it, This triangle is isosceles because it's made up of two radii. So um, I could do 180 minus 150, that's 30, and then halve it, which is 15. So let's write it more neatly. So we can say, what was it? the angle um, ROQ is 150 Can't because... Um, Angle was it? it was this tangent one, so OQP, OQP and ORP, they were both 90. So I'll, have to, I'll start with that. So those angles were 90 because tangent meets radius at 90. We know the angle ROQ was. 150 because um, angles in a quadrilateral add up to 360. Um, and then what else would we know? Um, we know that the triangle ROQ was isosceles. Um, and we can just do 180, take away 150, that's one, that's just 30. 30 divided by two is 15. So 15 degrees. Uh, so for that one, I just, I thought um, yeah. you could do like, if RQP is just an isosceles triangle, I just did um, 180, take Thirty divide that by two, yeah. And then 90, take away that. Well, that's that's a really good idea, actually. Yeah, that's true. So, yeah, you can see that the big triangle is isosceles. So you have seventy-five here, yeah, and then all you've got to do is ninety, take away seventy-five, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. Right that's there. a much better way, actually. That's a much quicker way. Both ways we get you the seven marks, but I think you're always better there. Yeah, well done. Okay. Um, I'll just what I'll do. I'll just quickly get you all the circle theorems. I'll put put that into the chat as well. So I've got my my cheat sheet here. Let's pop one, and that's my little girl. I'm sorry about that, everyone. These are cards that my wife made. I very much appreciated the card that you all gave me, but sorry about that. Sorry. There we go. Um. Yeah. So thank you all for the card. It was really nice. My wife was giving out thank you cards there. Okay. So um, I'll pop these into the chat. These are all of our circle themes. I haven't given the names, but they're just all of the um, circle theorems. Okay. So obviously, you've got to know the names, right? It's like the first one tangent meets radius, 90 degrees, angle of center is twice angle of circumference, diameter makes an angle of 90 degrees. You've got all the angle in the semicircle, you can also call it. Um, so I put that into the chat. This is where we have the cheat sheet, and we'll have a look at a couple more questions. Um, 
So let's have a look. We got some up. Uh, this is a good one. So this is summer 2017. Uh, also unit one. That was that the same question? That the same paper as the? No, must have been November. So got well, this one. This is a good question. And this is um, summer 17, unit one. There you go. <clears throat> okay, so summer 2017, unit one. Um, if we have a look at this question, if you look at the cheat sheet, we can see straight away what circle theorem this is. Um, so we want to prove the triangle ABC is isosceles, which basically means that two of the angles are the same and the other one's different. So have a look at it. See if there are any angles there you can just write down or work out. Would it be uh, angle C, 74? Brilliant. Angle C is 74. And what circle theorem is that? Uh, alternate. Angle the alternate segment that. theorem. It's, yeah. Yep, actually, it's called the alternate segment theorem. And the way I think about it is, if we have parallel lines, that's not what we have here, but if we have parallel lines, we know that the alternate angles... I can rub that out. Okay, I can't. The alternate angles are equal. Refresh the page. There we go. Let's have to refresh this page. Right, so we know that if we have parallel lines and a line that cuts through it, the alternate angles on the opposite side of the line are equal. This is actually not like that. This is sort of not what we expect. If we had that situation here, you would expect these angles to be the same. But because BC and AY are not, par are not parallel, you don't have that. You have what you don't expect, and that is for this angle to be 74. And the way that it works is you've got a tangent and two chords. Chords are just lines inside the circle. And they meet. When you have that, and then you join up the ends of those chords, you have the alternate segment theorem, which just says that this angle equals the angle in the alternate segment here. And this angle will equal the angle in the alternate segment up here. So straight away, as Will said, angle C is 74 degrees. What is the angle XAC? Or C A X is probably what you call it. What is that angle? Fifty-three. That's fifty-three. Brilliant. Can you work out the angle C A B? Yeah, it's going to be 50. Um, so this angle, yeah, this is going to be 53 as well. Because, yeah, excellent. Because if you add up 53 and 74, so this angle and this one, you get 127. And then if you take that away from 180, because you've got a straight line, you will get 53 again. So you can see the triangle ABC must be isosceles because it has two angles that are the same and the other one that is different. Okay. So obviously, you know, you'd have to show all the work in, you'd have to give the theorem, but that's how you do it. How do we feel about that one? Okay, so it's a good question, that one. Um, I'm just going to give you another one. I want to use a different circle theorem. Let me just find that. I know there's one good one. 
This is quite a good question. This is quite a hard one, actually. Right, let's have a go at this one. Actually uses the same circle theorem in part. It might use a different one as well. So there's this one, four-mark question. We may have done it before, but I think it's worth doing it. Work out the size of the angle PQR in terms of X. Um, so if you have a go at that one, you can draw it out. This is from, if you want the year, this is from November 2016. So the very first paper, November 2016, unit one. Okay, so have a go at that one. Uh, if, you, if you finish it, I'll put an extension one in the chat, and then we'll look at a different one. Right, um, yeah, it looks good. Yeah, I'll give right. So a little hint. So someone's worked this out. We know. I'm just going to give you a hint. So we know the angle PRQ is going to be 90 because the angle, you know, we know that POQ is a diameter. So QP is a diameter, even, and the angle in a semicircle is 90. So we know that angle is 90. There, that will be helpful.
Yeah, sorry about that. Someone's going to ring me. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so I have put an extension. Have I put an extension in the chat? I, think I have. I have, yeah. No, I haven't. I have, yeah. There we go. Yeah, extensions in the chat. Yeah. So has everyone had a go at the question on the screen? Okay, well, right, so, yeah, okay, so what I get, we know the angle PRQ is 90 degrees because, um, so I'll write it, angle PRQ equals 90 degrees because um, angle in a semicircle, so when you see a diameter and then the ends of the diameter join back to the circle, the angle you make is always 90. So angle in a semicircle is 90 degrees. Um, we also know that this angle, so QPR, is going to be x. So angle QPR is x, and that's because of the alternate segment theorem. And therefore, the angle PQR, which is what I want, is going to be 180 minus 90 minus X, which is just 90 minus X. Okay, so are we happy with that? Okay, so I'm going to put the extension one up and then what we'll do then, I'll just ask you whatever questions you want to go through. Uh, we've got some time to just have a look. Is any last minute topics ready for Monday that you want to go over? So we look at this. Uh, this was the extension one. Uh, find BCD in terms of X, a similar sort of question. So um, again, we can see there's going to be alternate segment theorem. So I can see this angle is 2x because it's alternate in terms of alternate segment theorem to the 2x here. Um, I want the angle BCD. Right, this is not an easy question, but we can see that A, B, C, and D are the corners of a quadrilateral, and they're all on the circumference. So we have what is called a cyclic quadrilateral. So if I just simplify this in a way, if I just think you've got 2x here, so this whole angle is 3x. I'll just alter, alter this ever so slightly. So what was the answer for the uh, first one? I missed that. Uh, the other, I think it was 90 minus x or something. It was, sorry, 90 minus x. Do we get that? Because the angles of the triangle are going to be 180. So 180 take away 90. Let's just get a different pen. 180 take away 90 is 90. But you've still got to take away the x. So it's 90 minus x. Do you want me to go through uh, that again? Yeah, yes, please. Yeah, that's fine. So... So what I would say, I won't write it as much detail as I did there. So we have, well, we have PQ is a diameter. And if you take the ends of the diameter and join them back to the circle, are you happy that the angle you make is 90? Yeah, I get that. Yeah, that's the angle of the semicircle is 90. We have a tangent, and you've got two chords. So the angle here is going to be equal to the angle in the alternate segment, which is this angle. Yeah, so this I is get also that. x. So effectively, you've got a triangle, you've got a right angle triangle with angle 90 and x. So to get the missing angle, you need to do. Um, X plus 90 plus, you know, so the missing angle was PQR. 
that is going to be 180. So to get PQR on its own, I would take away 90 from both sides and then take away X. You also keep in the 180, or did that just go? Oh, this 180? Yeah. So I took away 90 from both sides. Yeah. 180 take away 90 is 90. So I have X plus PQR, because the 90 on the left disappears. Oh, equals right. 90, and then Oh, I I took see. away X. So X, PQR is 90 take away X. I did Okay. 180 minus 90 minus X. Yeah, that's fine as well. But it just they want it in its simplest form. Right? No, they don't. They All don't really right, care. guys. They don't care in this question. So that would have been fine. In this other All right. question, I think they do care. But it's a good question. So in this question, not this one. Where was the? Just lost it. Sorry. Let me find that question again. Um, just lost that question I was just doing. Um, wasn't that one? Was it? Was the? Uh, oh, I put it into the chat. I'll just get it from there. Right. Yeah, this one. Yeah, so this question, um, this is the one I was doing here. Don't really want to edit it with AI. Let's put it into words. There we go. Right, so I'll just go through this bit. So we had, um, yeah, this angle was 2x. So if I imagine the whole angle BAD, That is going to be x plus the 2x, making 3x. So just alter this slightly. Would it be 360 minus 3x then? Well, I want the angle uh, BCD. So I'll just draw this one in. So all Or of 180 this is... minus 3x. Yes, exactly. Yeah, because the angle BCD... is opposite to it, right? And the angles, the opposite angles of a cyclic quadrilateral will add up to 180. So I can say angle BCD is 180 take away 3x. And that's it. So the first bit is because of alternate segment theorem. Second bit is because opposite angles of a cyclic quadrilateral add up to 180. Okay. So is everyone happy with that one? That's quite a tricky one as well, actually. Yeah, it's quite a hard question, I think. So i just delete that. So if we think about this angle, that needs to be the same as the angle in the alternate segment, right? Because you've got a tangent... and two chords. So the alternate segment is going to be, well, the angle in the alternate segment is this here. So that's also going to be 2x. And then you need to think about it in terms of a cyclic quadrilateral. So if you think about the four-sided shape A, B, C, D, The opposite angles of it need to add up to 180. So this angle, can you see that the angle I just highlighted is going to be 2x plus 1x, which is 3x. And therefore, the opposite angle to it, this one, needs to be 180 take away 3x, because the opposite angles of a cyclic quadrilateral add up to 180. Okay? Okay, so not, not the easiest one. Okay, but if we keep the circle of theorems in mind, so we've got the cheat sheet here, just go over them again. You've done them loads of times. I'm sure it'll be fine. Um, But again, you can always always put a message on the WhatsApp if you're not sure. Just tell your parents to put one on there and I'll be more than happy to help for Monday. Um, so last thing, um, uh, we can I can have a look through a past paper now or has anyone got any 
specific topics I want to go through before we finish. We've got about, yeah, we've still got about 10 minutes, five, 10 minutes. Is there anything that you've been doing this week that hasn't made sense? Yeah, somebody earlier wanted to go through, well, there was something on set notation, so the Venn diagram, someone wanted to go through earlier. And also trig graphs, someone wanted to go through that, like solving trig equations. So I've got most of the past papers here. Have a look through. Um, this is a really tricky one. Uh, that's probably a that's a really tricky algebraic fraction there, to be honest. Um, yeah, in terms of solving this one, probably want to get rid of this two first. So you'd have x minus one over x. Bracket 4x plus 3 equals minus 2. How would we go about solving that equation? What would I have to do first? Do you expand the denominator? Yeah. Well, yeah, we are going to be doing that. So we could do that first. 4x squared plus 12x. But we need to get rid of the denominator, really. So I would multiply both sides by the denominator. So on the right-hand side, you've got minus 2 times 4x squared plus 12x. And what would I have to do then? Well, I could now expand the right-hand side. So we'd have x minus 1 equals minus 8x squared. So remember, a minus times a plus is a minus. Minus 24x. And what type of equation is this? Uh, so, guys, ask quickly. How does the plus yep. 3 turn to plus 12x? That's a good question. That is wrong, actually. Yeah, I've done that wrong. Sorry. Yeah, that is that should be a plus. I'm really sorry about that. That should be a plus three x. I must have times the four with the three, which is wrong. That should just be plus three x. So let me change that. I'm really sorry about that. Thank you, Will. Let me change right, that. Sir. So we should have x minus one over four x squared plus three x. Sorry. X minus one equals minus two four x squared. plus 3x in brackets. We get that. We could take everything over to the left-hand side. So adding 8x squared to both sides. Add 6x to both sides. We've still got this plus x here and the minus 1. Then we could simplify. So 8x squared plus 7x minus 1 equals 0. How would I solve that equation? Quadratic. It's a quadratic, so we could factorize it. We could do 8 times minus 1, that's minus 8. So we have 8x squared. Uh, we want a pair of numbers that times to minus 8, add to plus 7. That's minus 1x and plus 8x. Um, so we could then factor out the x, giving us 8x 
minus 1 plus 1 times 8x minus 1. So sorry, I'm all over the place in this. We get x plus 1 and 8x minus 1 equals 0. So we either have x plus 1 being 0, so we get x equals minus 1, or 8x minus 1 equals 0, x equals plus 1, because 0 plus 1 is 1, over 8. And those would be my answers. Okay? That's just quite a nice algebraic fractions question you could get. Um, has anyone got anything else they want to go through ready for Monday? I mean, obviously, you've all worked really hard. I know, you know I'm sure you're all feeling really confident about that. Um, anything on Wednesday that you're not sure of? Any calculator topics? Actually, yes, sir. you know the graphs are like, they're just shading a region. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, yeah so. Yeah, like some of the, um, like the lines, I don't really understand. Yeah, we'll have mean. a look at that. Yeah, this, this, like this, like these sort of questions. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So just for reference, this question is, I don't know what question this didn't say. Right, okay, I'll find what, find what year this is. November 2022. So this is November 2022, unit one. It usually comes up in the non-calc. So using the axes below, find the region which satisfies the following inequalities. Now, to do this, you need to actually draw all of the yeah, sorry, I can't speak there. Draw the three lines that are specified. So we imagine instead of the inequality signs that we just had equals. So y equals a half x plus one. Um, y plus x equals zero, and you need y on its own. So I would take this plus x away from both sides, giving me y equals minus x, and you got x equals three. So we're happy so far there. If you want to get y as the subject when y is involved, otherwise just put the equals in. Okay, so to actually um, draw the graphs, if you have y equals a number, you can just draw it. Or if you have x equals a number, you can just draw it. So we can draw x equals 3 by literally going to where x is 3, so that's here, and just drawing a straight line up, okay? So I'm just going to try and do that. Yes, I can, because obviously I haven't got a ruler. So that is the line x equals 3. However, for the y's, you need to do a little table. So I'll just do a little table for y equals a half x plus 1. So I'll make a little table of values for x and y. And you can pick any values of x you want, but just keep it simple. We'll just do, say, 0, 1, and 2. And we need to work out the corresponding values of y. So if y is equal to half times x plus 1, when x is 0, y is going to be a half times 0 plus 1, which we should just see is 1. Yep. Similarly, when x is 1, y is going to be a half times 1 plus 1. Now, a half times 1 is just a half, plus 1 is going to be 1 and a half, so 1.5. And finally, when x is 2, y is going to be a half times 2 plus 1. Half times 2 is 1, plus 1 is 3. So we're happy with that table for y.
Yeah, I think I just heard you then. Well, I just cut out a little bit. I did hear you then. So similarly, we have y equals minus x. I mean, that's doesn't really need a table. I think you could probably know what that looks like. But if I just pop it in, when x is 0, y is 0. When x is 1, y is minus 1. When x is 2, y is minus 2. We then use these tables to plot the graphs. So y equals half x plus 1. When x is 0, y was 1. When x was 1, y was 1 1.5. When x is 2, y is 3. Now, there's a mistake. There's got to be a mistake there because 2. You're being stupid. Half times 2 plus 1 is obviously 2. Sorry, half times 2 is 1. It's being stupid. Sorry. So when x is 2, y is 2. So to draw that line, you just join up the three points, but then extend the line going on. So it'll be like that, something like that anyway. Um, y is zero. Yeah, about that. There you go. Let's do it again. That's better. Okay. And the other line was um, y equals minus x, which just looks like this. You can plot it. Um, you know, one at minus one. 2 at minus 2, and so on. And we get that. Oh. Now, usually at GCSE, you can see where the region is, okay? It's going to be a, usually a triangle, so we can see it's this region. So can everyone just see it's going to be that? That's the triangle that you've made. That's the region that you'd have to shade in. Yeah. Now, just to be completely accurate, though, we can use the inequality signs to help us. We know that this line that I drew is y equals half x plus 1. This line was um, y plus x equals 0, or y equals minus x. This line was x equals 3. Now, the half x plus 1, that had a less than or equal to. So that means the region needs to be less than or underneath the line. So the region is going to be underneath that line. The x was a less than or equal to, which means the region is to the left of that line. And the other one was a greater than or equal to, so the region is above this line. So we can see all the arrows point to the relevant region, which is this region here. OK? And you know you can indicate that that's the region by just just saying, I have shaded the region. Is everyone happy with that one? Because they are hard questions. Regions is probably is one of the harder topics for sure. Um, do you want me to go to another one of those, another regions question? No, I'm all right, sir. I was just like the half, uh, half X when I was a bit confused on what I said now. Yeah, can you? I'm just substitute. I've picked zero, one, and two. You can pick any numbers, but I usually use zero, one, and two. Um, I substitute in X is zero, half times zero is zero, plus one is one. Um, half times one is a half, plus one is one and a half. Half times two is one. Plus one is two, and that's how I've got my y values. Okay. Yeah, thank you, sir. It's my pleasure. So um, uh, we'll leave it there for now. If you if you do think of anything you're not sure of, by all means, put it in the WhatsApp group. But otherwise, I think you've all worked really hard. You know, well, certainly when I taught you, and certainly this this term as well. So um, you've got your non-calculator on Monday, calculator on Wednesday. So go in and feel confident, do your very best, and um, you're probably going to start additional maths then. So have a think about it over the next week. I'm happy to carry on but doing additional maths. I'm more than happy to do that. Have a think about that with your parents, uh, if that's something you'd like to do. And um, we'll leave it until next time for now. Okay? So have a really good Thank evening. You, feel confident next week, and um, have a think about if you want to do continue doing this but for additional maths.